Hello, this is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of our Booster Club members for your many donations and much more your prayers. We visited faraway countries and strange lands. We've even spoken to dignitaries and were detained for spreading the glorious gospel in Cuba. The truth is that the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Help us on our journey as we continue to raise up the nation of Israel. 12 tribes worldwide. Join or donate today. Shalom. Have any questions for me, for us from last week's show? Any uh, questions from your listeners? Anything? Uh, not really. I have a few, uh, but I'll keep them for later on. As um, last week you said, uh, well, before we get into anything else, we'll try to to add on to what we had started uh, last week concerning the split of um you know, the children of israel i don't know do we finish that because other questions i have are kind of different from uh, last week's message so can we finish yes, that, that uh, we yes, get that to my finished. questions that was finished yes okay yes that was finished uh last week's show brothers and sisters to those of you who are tuning in now we discussed um about we touched a bit uh about the split that happened under the reign of king solomon with Rehoboam and jeroboam um, also, we discussed the term uh, Jews and Gentiles and, and, and Greeks, how we became Grecians, how we became Greeks. Uh, these are things that we discussed last week. We discussed about us being scattered amongst the Gentiles, being all Gentiles. And you can bring this up until this very day. Um, our brothers and sisters who are scattered on the continent of Africa, now calling themselves Malawians, um, Ghanaian, Sierra Leoneans, uh, Ghanaian, and so forth, and Ugandans. Um, you are the children of the Israelites. You are the children that was lost and scattered in the diaspora. So it's nine, and now it's time to come back home. Aha, perfect. Perfect. Um, where do we begin? I have like how many issues? Ah, about three. I was I was um I was going through Israel United in Christ on um, is it uh, YouTube yes when did you go to Nigeria is it uh, February this year you were in Nigeria uh, is I it, believe uh, so I, I believe so yeah Bishop uh, Nathaniel was in Nigeria I think in February this very year uh, yes yes we were it yeah. was definitely this year I just forgot what month but it was definitely before the COVID situation happened ah okay all right uh, so. No, uh, okay. Then maybe if it's uh, maybe last year and the video was uploaded this year, maybe something like that. Um, however, mm -hmm, however, uh, there was a talk, uh, uh, the clip I was looking at, there was a talk where he said that uh, most people will say that it's not about his image, that's important. And by image, 
uh, we're talking of uh, Jesus Christ. Now, Nathaniel was saying that most people argue here to say that it's not about his image, or the image is not important, but rather his message. And then he said, now uh, he went on to say, if they lie to you, by there I think uh, I was implying to what you always say, the white people, stuff like that. So he said, if they lie to you about his image as being white, uh, do you think they told us the truth about mm -hmm. his message? Mm -hmm. Now, on that, um, it raised a question to me to say, if this is uh, the line of thinking, uh, about just how much of things in the Bible should we say have, have, have the same message as intended in the beginning? Uh, has the Bible over the years been altered uh, some things about Jesus Christ as not the way we think they are in the Bible? Um, well, here's the thing. The white man misinterpreted our scripture, which is our constitution, our Bible. Um, it was, the only thing that was removed from the Bible was, um, was called the Apocrypha. Now, let me show you what the white man did. Let's go to the book of Isaiah 29, verse 16. Isaiah 29, verse 16. Um, and I think we discussed something like this before um, with that, um, that message that you found on Facebook that day from our servants over here in Master. So this is along the lines of the same thing as far as misinterpretation and miseducation of the Negro by the so-called white man. Um, <clears throat> When we go to the book of Isaiah 29, verse, um, one second, verse 13, it says, Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips to honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of so God is telling you that our fear towards him is taught by the precepts of men. So not out of the Bible, but what man tells us. So you've got to ask yourself, okay, so what man is he referring to? And when you do an evaluation of the scripture, the man that taught us for us is the so-called white man. Uh, whether we like it, believe it or not. Um, I know a lot of times, like examples, right? for example, Africa, you have a black continent with so-called black people. You have black teachers. The majority of your teachers are black, are black people. But where did the curriculum come from? Where did they get their education from? Who gave you the, the, the things that you study, the textbooks and so forth, and and um and the certain um ideologies and, and um and disciplines that you guys learn? That all comes from the so-called white man. Now, when you go to the book of Deuteronomy, the twenty-eighth chapter, and you read verse. 47, let me get it for you. Deuteronomy 28, verse 47. Listen closely. Um, we're going to start at verse 47 to 48. It says, Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart, for the abundance of all things, therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. So you hear that word? Whatever you want, in the want of all things, you want education, Horace, who do you have to go to? The white man. If you want to learn about the Bible, you want to learn about God, Jesus, the, the, the disciple, uh, the angels, who do you have to go to? You have to go to the white man. He's the one that taught us his precepts. Our fear towards God was taught by the precepts of the so-called white man. Now, to answer the question that you posed. When, the, when, when we were in Nigeria with the bishop, when Bishop Nathaniel said, um, if he gave you a false image, how could you believe that he gave you a, a, a true message? And that statement is absolutely true. Why? We could go to the scripture of John chapter 7, verse 38 now, in the New Testament. Let's see what Christ told us. And then we're going to evaluate uh, John chapter 7, verse 38. Let's see what Christ told us first, and brothers and sisters of the loud who are following along. And let's see if everything lines up. John chapter 7, verse 38 says, He that believeth on me, as the 
the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Let me repeat that again. He that believeth on me as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. So the first, the first lie that we um, learned from the so-called white man chorus was the color of Christ. He told us that Christ looked just like him. But when you go to the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 14, you start to read for us. It says, His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. So when you start at the top where it says, His head and his hairs were white like wool, operative word, wool. Who has woolly hair? The so called black men. Text. Then it says, um, and his as white as snow, all his hair were white as snow. So that's contrary to the image that we were given by the European man, which is a, a white man with blonde hair. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Why? Because Christ drank wine for us. Remember the prophecy with Moses, right? Now it says, and his feet like unto fine brass. What's the color of brass for us? Brown. As if they burned in the furnace, you burn brown brass, what color does it become? Dark brown, almost black. Black, dark brown, right? So right here is lie number one. Now, as the bishop stated in Nigeria, if the man went so far, so far out of his way to whitewash images, to lie about who we are, who the Savior is, in the Bible, of course his message was corrupted. Of course he corrupted the message of Christ if he corrupted the image of Christ. Now what was Christ, some of Christ's messages? Let's start. Let's go to the book of Matthew. Let's go to the book of Matthew because all he did, he didn't, really, he didn't uh, all he did was uh, misinterpret scripture. Because remember Horace, did we know how to read English? No. no. Well, we, were, we didn't. Even when we were colonized for us, we didn't know how to read English. Or whatever whatever um, language that we were taught about God or the Bible, we didn't know that language. When brothers and sisters was taken from Congo and Guinea and Benin and brought into the island of Haiti, and they were enslaved by the French, we didn't speak French. We didn't speak French. When the, when the British took the Malawians and brought them into slavery and colonized the rest that stayed on that land. They didn't speak English. So therefore, we had to learn everything from them. Okay? Let's go to Matthew 5 and let's see what let's start and to explain and unravel all the things that the white man lied about. Let's deal with the commandments first. We already dealt with the image of Christ. Now we're going to deal with his message. This was one of Christ's first messages. He says, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy but to fulfill. So Christ said, I did not come to destroy the law, meaning the commandments, or the prophets, what the prophets said. I came, I am not come to destroy but to fulfill. What did Christ fulfill? The law of sacrifice. But according to the white man and, and everything that he taught all of these pastors in these Christian churches, they tell you the commandments are done away with. The commandments are done away with. You're washed and saved in the blood of Jesus. But right here, Christ says the contrary words. He says, For verily I say unto you, though heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. You hear what Christ tells you? Christ is telling you that the commandments are still in existence today. Look at verse 19, Lawrence. Whosoever, therefore, shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So right here, Horace, Christ is telling you out of his own mouth, keep the commandments. Keep the commandments. The way they teach in Malawi today, the laws are done away with. You're washed and saved in the blood of Jesus. Why? Because we've been taught by the precepts of men. Our fear towards God has been taught to us by the precepts of men. 
What man was? The light man. Plain and simple. Let's get some more messages. Let's go to Matthew 19, verse 16. What else did Christ tell us? We're going to go to the book of Matthew, chapter 19, verse 16. All right. So, all right. Brothers and sisters of Malawi, if you're following at home, please open your Bible. Take notes. Matthew chapter 19, verse 16. Christ says, And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? So this young man came to Christ for us, and he asked him, Christ, good master, what do I have to do that I can inherit eternal life? This is what Christ told him. Did Christ say, uh, an hour before you die, to scream on the Lord Jesus, scream on me, and you shall be saved? No. Look what he told him. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But, but, Paulus, but, people of Malawi, if thou wilt enter into life, if you want the kingdom on earth, Paulus, you want eternal life, keep the commandments. But what do they teach us today? That you don't have to keep the commandments. That's basically what they're teaching if they say the laws of God are done away with and you're saved under faith, you're saved by grace. Isn't that, that's what we've been taught, right, Horace? Mm -hmm. So you got to ask yourself. So these are things that was taught to us by the white institutions who have put many black pastors as the face of Christianity, but the message is still the same. The message still comes from the devil himself. So you got to ask yourself the validity of that statement when the bishop said, if the image is wrong, surely the message is wrong. And he's 100% right. Because we're reading, we're reading contradictions from what the white man says to what's being said in the Bible. So the white man has not taught us the Bible the way the Bible clearly explains itself. Let's get some more. Let's go to the book of John. John chapter 14, verse 15. Because you'll hear, you'll hear people say, I know Christ. I love Christ. I know him, right? John chapter 14, verse 15. Look at this. If ye love you, if you love Christ, if you love God, if you love me, keep my commandments. You hear how it, it, it's repetitive? The Bible was repetitive. This word, keep my commandments, it's reoccurring throughout the whole Bible words. So surely somebody's been lying to us. Somebody has been lying to us for us. And you know what? When you get to the book of Revelation, the message does not change. Let's go to Revelation chapter 2, verse 26. Look at what Christ commanded us. Look at what Christ commanded us for us. Revelation chapter, chapter 2, hmm. verse 26. Revelation 2, verse 26. Mm -hmm. And he that overcometh, and keepeth my works unto the end. To him will I give power over the nations. Now, now watch this for us. Where it says, keepeth my works unto the end. What does that mean, Horus? What does the works represent? What does the works represent? We've been talking about it ever since the radio show started. I want to make sure you're paying attention. <laughs> Christ, said, Christ said, he that overcometh and keepeth my works. Works. What works for us? Uh, the works of these, I believe, should be the good deeds. Um, what? What? What are, what are the good deeds? Make it, it plain and simple. So in I'm line. In line with the. Uh, in line with uh, the rules, uh, the commandments of Christ. Very good. The rules, the laws, the commandments of Christ. So Christ, right here in the New Testament, in the Book of Revelation, tells us, and he that overcometh. And keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. So not only is Christ telling you you must keep the commandments for us, but he's telling you you're going to have power over the nations. Over. Not equal to orders. Over the nations. Not under the nations. Not equal. Above. Over the nations. So that's another lie the white man taught us. He says that the kingdom of heaven. Everybody's going to be holding hands. Everybody's going to be equal. Everybody's going to inherit the kingdom of heaven. So if everybody's going to inherit the kingdom of heaven, Horace, 
Why did Christ say, I'm going to give you power over the nations? Surely somebody's been lying to you for us. The white man's been lying. And to make it clear, Christ explains it. Look at the next verse. It says, and he shall rule them. Who's the he that shall rule them? Who's the he here, Horace? The one who shall keep, uh, 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 who shall keep the works of Christ unto the ends. Very good. And he, the Israelites, mm -hmm. shall rule them. Who's the them that's going to be ruled? The other nations. Very good. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. What do you do with a rod of iron? Horus. Ah, yes. <laughs> you beat people up. Yeah. You crack heads wide open. You know how they used to whip off backs in slavery with a whip? Christ said, no, nah, don't worry about that. I'm going to give you something better than the whip. I'm going to give you a rod of iron that breaks bones and cracks skulls. This is what Christ is saying. It says, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. As the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. You hear what the, you hear what the Bible is talking about? This is the message that was not taught to us. But you know what message was taught to us? The laws are done away with. Christ is a white man. Servants obey your master. These are the things that was misinterpreted and taught to us because we could not read for us. So we had to believe everything the white man told us. If the white man told you that a donkey can go to work, we would believe that. We couldn't read. If the white man told you a snake can stand up on its feet and play basketball, we would believe it. We was in slavery. We had to believe everything they, they taught us. They beat it into us. When we rejected it, we were killed, we were beat, we were tortured, we were whipped. These are the things that happened to us. So, as to, so to alleviate and escape those, those physical oppression, we had to bow down. We had to bow down to the white men. Let, you know what? Let's get that. Let's get that. Let's go to the book of Isaiah. Uh, before, that, uh, before we, yes. we, 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 we actually uh, let's get away. Verse 28, um, he went on to say that I'll give him the morning star. That, mm -hmm. What's that? The morning, the morning star is making reference to wisdom, understanding, in Christ himself. Ah. Yes. Now, let's go to the book of Isaiah. Okay. We're going to go to the book of Isaiah. And I want... Isaiah chapter 51, verse 23. Okay? Isaiah 51, verse 23. Let's start at... Let's start at... Verse 21. Isaiah 51, and we're going to read down to verse 23 because I used the word bow down. They made us bow down. When they had us in slavery, they destroyed us for us. That's why they were able to indoctrinate us. It says, Therefore, hear now this... Thou afflicted and drunken. Who is the afflicted and drunken, Horace? Our people. Drunken with what? Drunken with false wine, lies, philosophies, lies, deceit. We've been drunken with lies and deceit. It says, therefore, hear now this, thou afflicted and drunken, but not with wine. Thus saith thy Lord, the, thus saith thy Lord, the Lord, and thy God, that pleaded the cause of his people. So who's going to plead our cause, Horace? God. When he returns, when Christ returns, he's going to plead for us. He's going to fight for us. It says, and by God that pleaded the cause of his people, behold, I have taken out of thine hand the cup of trembling. All this time, Horace, we've been drinking the cup of wrath, the cup of trembling, the cup of affliction. We read about it that in Deuteronomy 28, all those curses. God said he's going to remove the cup from your hand, Horus. Remove the cup from the people, the brothers and sisters, the Israelites of Malawi. Christ said he's going to remove the cup from your hand. But if he removed it, what is he going to do with it? Is he going to throw it away or is he going to hand the cup to somebody else? Let's read it. Behold, I have taken out of thine hand the cup of trembling, even the dregs of the cup of my fury. Where do we read about the Lord's fury, Horus? 
Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15 to 68. Thou shalt no more drink again. That's the same thing that Christ said in Revelation chapter 2, verse 26. He that overcometh, they keepeth my works unto the end, Horus. You're no longer going to drink the drink out of the cup of the fury of the Lord. But we must keep the commandments unto the end. Now look at verse 23. But I will put it, but I, God, will put it. What's the it? The cup, the cup of trembling, the cup of fury. He says, but I will put it into the hand of them that afflict you, that afflict thee. Who is the who is the them that's been afflicting us? Horus, the white man, Esau, Mazungu, and all the other nations. Christ says, but I will put it into the hand of them that afflict thee, which have said to thy soul, Horus, bow down. How did they tell you bow down, Horus? You're worshiping all his images. You're following his religion. They beat it into you. They enslaved you. They colonized you, and there's nothing you can do. You couldn't fight. You couldn't fight back, Horus. You had to bow down. When the white man said, "Follow this image, or I'm going to whip you, or I'm going to kill you," guess what you did? You bowed down. Those of us who did not bow down, what happened? We were killed. We were destroyed. It says, "Which have said to thy soul, bow down." That we may go over. How did they go over you, Horus? They stepped all over you. They walked all over you. They stamped the residue with their feet. They walked all over us, Horus. And thou hast said, and thou hast laid thy body as the ground and as the street to them that went over. You hear that? God is saying we laid our body as the street, Horus. They walked all over us. But you know what God is telling us now, Horus? Read Isaiah 52, verse 1. This is what God is telling us now. Get Isaiah 52, verse 1, Horus. Look at what God said. Awake, awake. You hear what God is telling us? Awake, awake, Horus, because you've been asleep a long time. Not physically asleep, but spiritually asleep. We've been sleeping a long time, Horus. Asleep in what? Christianity. Asleep in Islam, asleep in all these religions, philosophies. Awake, awake. Put on thy strength, Horus. What is your strength, Horus? Keeping the commandments. Brothers and sisters of Malawi, what is our strength? Keeping the commandments of God in the faith of Christ. Put on thy strength, O Zion. See, he's talking to Israel. He's not talking to the whole world. Zion is another name for Israel. Put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem. See? The holy city. So what are we? Remember, we are a people before we are a place. I'm going to repeat that again. The nation of Israel, Jerusalem, is a people before it's a place. The Bible says, O Jerusalem, thy holy city. For henceforth there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. Who's the uncircumcised and unclean horse? The other nation. God is saying they're not going to come in unto us no more. Because every time they came in unto us, what did they bring? They brought unclean religion, unclean food, and they always took us into slavery. God says the uncircumcised and the unclean shall come into you no more. Then verse 2 says, read this for us. Verse 2 says, shake thyself from the dust. Why does the Bible say shake yourself, Horus, from the dust? Because you've been asleep in the dust. Remember, we lay down on the ground mm -hmm. so they could walk over us? God is telling you, Horus, wake up. Wake up, Horus. Shake thyself from the dust. Arise and sit down. That's what you're doing right now. You're sitting down in the studio. And you're learning. You're learning scripture. When you sit, you're being attentive. You're, you're sitting down. You're paying attention. Paying attention. Paying attention to the message of God. Arise and sit down. O Jerusalem, loose thyself from the bands of thy neck. What's on your neck, Horus? What's on your neck? The spiritual yoke. The spiritual iron of Christianity, of white man Jesus. And everything that follows behind it, with behind him, meaning his message. Okay? It says, loose thyself from the bands of thy neck. Oh, captive. You hear that word right there? Horace, I know you see it on your screen. Yeah. Oh, 
captive, all captive, all captive daughter of Zion. But thus saith the Lord, ye have sold yourselves for naught. Meaning you sold yourselves for nothing. All you have to do is keep the commandments of God, boys. We did not keep the commandments of God, so God sold us into slavery. That was the punishment. That was the agreement. It says, for thus saith the Lord, ye have sold yourselves for naught, and ye shall be redeemed without money. God says he's going to redeem us without money. Okay? So that's the message that we have not been taught because our fear towards God was taught by the precepts of men. Of, of men. What man the white man? Now, Horace, let's go back to the book of Revelation. Let's get some more messages that was purposely left out from Esau, Mazungu himself. Okay, so we read Revelation chapter 2, verse 26. Now let's go to Revelation chapter 13 and verse 9 and 10. I want you to read along with me, Horace. Yep. Brothers uh, and sisters that's chapter, of uh, Revelation chapter what? Revelation chapter 13, verse 9 and 10. Mm -hmm. Brothers and sisters of Malawi, if you are following and listening in, please take your Bibles out and read along with us. We're in the book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 9 and 10. And it says, if any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. Horus, that was never taught to us by the white man. Why do you think? Why do you think the white man left that out? Because he didn't remove it out of the Bible, but he never taught it to us. And he did not expect for us to read. There's one thing, there's a saying in America, I don't know if they have this saying in Africa. There's a saying in America called if you want to hide something from a Negro, meaning a black man, put it in a book. I'm going to repeat that again. There's a saying in America. It's an old saying. If you want to hide something from a black man, put it in a book. They would never expect that the Spirit of God will return back on the earth to revive the remnant of his people, the children of Israel. So when you read this chorus, I want you to explain to me why they didn't teach us this. Look at verse 10. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. What is that talking about, Horace? And why was not that taught to us? <laughs> hmm. Um, well, the best understanding here um, I would be that uh, uh, the so-called, uh, the so-called, uh, should I say white person, you know, you know I'm, <laughs> uh, well, you're right, hey, you know, every, every, everybody on earth uses the term white man, when we say so-called, it's because he's not really white when you look at him, he does not look like the complexion or color of a loose leaf paper. He's really red. The Bible calls him Esau because you can see the blood through his skin. His biblical name is Esau. So if you if you're uncomfortable saying white no, man, really, that's uh, fine. You no, can say Esau. No, let's just, let's uh, let's call him what God called him. So Esau, that's his name. So it, go ahead, explain the verse, and you can say Esau. You don't have to say that. <laughs> no, I was only saying that the basic understanding, according to, I don't according to me. Uh, let's just say according to. Uh, to what we're saying here is that uh, in the first place, uh, if the white man took the black person into captivity, he as well, according to the verse that says, He that leadeth into captivity himself shall go into the same captivity, and who kills by the sword must also be killed by the sword. So, maybe uh, why this wasn't taught is uh, that things in this case will kind of like backfire. So, uh, obviously, thank you. Thing had to be thank you very good. Out. Thank you, Horace. Beautiful, beautiful answer. Now you got to ask yourself, Horace, was that the only message that wasn't taught that could backfire? If he taught the Bible, if he taught us the Bible, thus saith the Lord, the way it's written, everything would have backfired. If he would have went to Revelation chapter 1, verse 14, to teach us the color of Christ, he could never say Christ is white. If he went to Deuteronomy 28 and taught us 
uh, verse 15 to 68, he could never say that the white man in Jerusalem are the Jews because they didn't go into slavery either. So he's been teaching us lies. He's been holding the book, Horace. He's been holding the book, but he has not been taught. He has not been teaching out of the book the correct way. He's been holding the book, but he has not been teaching out of the book the correct way. Mm -hmm. Now, and that was a very good answer that you gave, and that is the correct answer. Now you got to ask yourself, what was Christ quoting? Did the message change? No. Let's go to Exodus chapter 21, verse 16. Because remember, Horace, like I always say in all, on all of the shows that um, I've been doing thus far with you, for the people of Malawi, mm -hmm. we, we always say that the New Testament was not written when Christ was on the scene. So, what was Christ, what was Jesus Christ quoting? The Exodus Christ. chapter 21, verse 16. And he that stealeth a man and selleth him, or if he be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death. So my question to you now, were we stolen by the so-called white man? Yes. Did he sell us, did he sell us for us into slavery? Yes. Are we found in his hand? I'm here in Texas, in America, who controls America? Who runs America? I'm still found in his hand. I'm still in the hand of Esau. Brothers and sisters of Malawi, although you're out on a black continent, you are still colonized by the so-called white man. You're not free either. We are still found in the enemy's hand. God told us, if he, if, and, if, and he that stealeth the man and selleth him, or if he be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death. So when you go back to Revelation chapter 13, verse 10, and Christ said, he that, he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. What was he quoting, Horace? He was quoting the law. This is why the white man will tell you that the laws of God are done away with. Because they want to escape this judgment right here, Horace. They want to escape this judgment right here. But Christ was quoting that judgment. So, to answer your question in the beginning of the show, um, in regards to the message, yes, the message is wrong, the image that was given to us is wrong, but the, that does not make the Bible obsolete. The Bible was misinterpreted. He was holding the Bible, but he was not teaching us correctly out of the Bible. So hopefully that answered your first question, Boris. Uh -huh. We can move on to your second question. Okay, um, yeah, I think uh, I think uh, we've much doubt on the first question. Um, secondly, it's uh, is this another teaching I came across? Um, there is no fifty-fifty with God. Um, the same. I, I, I remember I've just forgotten the name of uh, of the captain who was delivering this message of uh, Israel in um, United in Christ, rather. But the verse he did quote was Exodus 24, verse 12. And now, uh, what he was saying um, in his, uh, in his uh, message was that uh, there is no democracy with God. Uh, God is a dictator. Uh, there is no democracy or options with us in God. It's either uh, you obey or you die. And um, he went on a little bit in the teaching. He also covered Numbers 15, verse 32, where, uh, where there are simply punishments of uh, failing to keep the seventh day holy. Uh, that's a failure to keep the Sabbath holy on uh, Numbers 15, verse 32. But let's begin with uh, the top part, that there is no 50-50 uh, with God. We don't have options or we practically don't have a say when it comes to issues of God. Uh, we've meant to believe that God is the God of democracy. Uh, not a dictator, uh, as we saw uh, or, uh, or as uh, we've uh, uh, we've been taught in churches uh, that uh, the war in heaven, God let uh, He did let uh, Satan, uh, the so-called uh, Lucifer, by that time to 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 have his say. And what he did, he didn't kill him. He only threw him down the earth. 
by not destroying him to show that he is democratic. What are you laughing? <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing because that uh, what you just said there, the latter part of your statement about Lucifer being in heaven cast down for us, um, that's what was taught to us by the precepts of men. Yes, um, the exactly. white men. Yes. But um, what's the truth? Uh, what's the basic truth about it? Maybe let's begin there before we get into okay. into my area question. Okay. All right. Well, there is no to, to to answer your first question about equality. There is no equality with God. No two things are equal. There's mm -hmm. nothing equal on us. Even when we examine modern day society, we're not equal with other nations. Uh, the Chinese man is not equal with the white man. The Arab is not equal with anybody, with the white man, and we're always at the bottom. So that right there lets you know that there's no equality. Just observe life. Even when you observe nature, even when you observe nature, there is no two things that are equal. Now, in regards to your latter statement, um, with the, um, what did you say, about Lucifer? Yeah, about God being democratic and not being a dictator, because I couldn't do that, Captain, who was saying that uh, there is no democracy with God. God is a dictator. If he says something, we, we you do it. It's either you do it yes, or, or you die. Uh, so oh, my yes, question was, was say, all along I've been thinking that maybe God is the God of democracy. He will let you do something and sometimes will let you go unpunished to show that he is merciful and democratic. Well, well, here's the thing. The word merciful and democratic the word merciful and democratic are not interchangeable. To be merciful, to be merciful is what God has instituted to the nation of Israel, meaning when we repent, Christ will come back and we'll get the kingdom. That's merciful. Uh, having your life spared when all of us are worthy of death, that's merciful. Democracy, on the other hand, is do what you want. Do what feels good. God is not no do what you want, do what's feel good. At the end of the day, although you have an option to do good or do evil, the end thereof is death. Let, let's get that first. Let's get um, Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. And then we're going to deal with that democratic stuff. Because uh, democratic just means do what you want, do what feels good. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. Look at what it says right here. It says, for the wages of sin is death. So you do have an option, Horace, to do sin. For example, if I was in the studio with you and I had a pork, I mean a pork, if I had a plate of pork, cooked pork, and I put it before you and I put a utensil there, I put the pork there with the knife and the paper towel, and I just sat back and I said, here, eat. You have the option, you have the option to eat it, and you have the options to not eat it. If you eat it, you're transgressing God's will. If you don't eat it for us, you're keeping God's commandment. God gave us those same options when we read the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse um, 1 all the way to 68. 1 to 14 were the blessings if we did good. 15 to 68 was the curses if we did bad. Guess what we chose to do? We chose the latter. We chose the curses one. Now when you read Romans 6, verse 23, it says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So democracy, democracy tells you you can do what you want. You can go ahead and eat for us. Everything is good as long as you pray over it. You can go ahead and eat rabbit, bush meat. It's good as long as you pray over it. You can celebrate Christmas for us. It's good. Don't worry. Christ knows your heart. They'll tell you, oh, what else they'll tell you? They'll tell you, oh, um, churches say, come as you are. You don't have to change. Come as you are. You can come as, as an adulterer and remain an adulterer. You can come as a homosexual. We can't judge you. Come as you are. That is not in the Bible. That's democracy. That is not of God. God demands change. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Let's read that. God demands change. God demands change for us. We're going to the book of Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. Look what it says. 
It says, and be not conformed to this world, because what do we live in? In America, they call America what? A democratic republic, right? They call America a democratic state, a democratic country. God says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. What is the will of God, Horace? Keeping the commandments. The commandment says no pork, Horace. The commandment says no adultery, Horace. The commandments say no Christmas, Horace. So, yes, to answer your question, God is a dictator. He dictates to us good laws. Now, we do have the option to, to do good or evil. But just know that the end of evil is death. So, in all actuality, it would behoove you to choose the first ap- option, which is righteousness, which is good. Do not choose the democracy. Do as you want. Do as you please. God was never about democracy. Now, Horace, what is another name for um, Democrats or democracy? What else would they call them? Another name for democracy. Maybe. Not really sure. But it has to do with freedom. Freedom to do what not. Freedom to do this. Freedom, uh, liberty, and exactly. what not. Yeah. Oh, I like that word you said. You said the word liberty. Yeah. Liberty. Have you ever heard of the word liberal? Have you ever liberal. heard of liberal? Yeah, I believe I come across it. I've seen yes. it. Yeah, that's, a, that's, that's another word they use in America to define democracy. They call them liberals, meaning their views are liberal. Their views give you liberty to do what you want by. So now let's go to the book of Isaiah chapter 32, verse 5. Let's go to the, um, the book of Isaiah chapter 32, verse 5, verse. Okay. It says, the vile person shall be no more called liberal, nor the child said to be bountiful. You hear what the Bible is calling a liberal? Those with that democratic mind state, Horace, God calls them vile. He says, the vile person shall be no more called liberal, Horace, nor the child said to be bountiful. Watch this. Look at verse 6, Horace. For the vile person will speak villainy, evil. The vile person will speak villainy. Because in America, liberal Democrats, they tell you, you can go ahead and have an abortion. Do you know ever since, um, you, have you heard about the situation with George Floyd, the black man who got killed in America, the white police officer was kneeling on his neck and killed him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. one who was ever since, yeah. Yes, George Floyd. Mm-hmm. Ever since his death, blacks have committed 63,000 abortions. Abortion is a liberal mind state. Abortion is a democratic mind state. God says, for the vile person will speak villainy. You know what else liberals and demo- a democratic state tells you you can do? Remember Barack Hussein Obama? Mm-hmm. Remember when he passed? What was the, one of, what was the major thing? that Barack did in his eight years of presidency that everybody talks about. The one thing that he's known for as the black man. Go ahead, you tell me. Um. <laughs> hmm. Do I remember? I don't know, help me out. He legalized what? What did he legalize? Barack, uh, under Barack Obama, what did he legalize? And he tried to bring it to Africa too to upset homosexuality. Ah, he that was him. him. Yes. He wrote it into law that two men can get married. Two women can get married. You can choose your own sex. So if you're a girl and you really feel like a boy, you can walk somewhere and go get a sex change. You can change your... That's a liberal mind state. That's a democratic mind state. That's why the Bible says, for the vile person who will speak villain and his heart will work iniquity. You hear what the Bible calls the, a democratic mind state? It says your heart will work iniquity to practice hypocrisy. Because when you, in America, what do they say? On the back of their dollar. Have you ever seen the back of a U.S. dollar? What does it say on the back of the U.S. dollar, Horace? I don't have any cash on me, Horace. I am broke. <laughs> but on the, back, on the back of the U.S. dollar, it says, in God we trust. 
America calls, America calls themselves a Christian nation. When you go to court in America, they make you what? Swear on the Bible words. Mm. But the Bible says they shall practice hypocrisy. Because it's hypocrisy. It's all lies. It's all lies. It says to practice hypocrisy and to utter error against the Lord. To make empty the soul of the hungry, and he will cause the drink of the thirsty to fail. So who's the soul of the hungry? We are the ones. We are the ones that hunger. Hunger for what? Spiritual food. Meaning God's law, statutes, and understanding. His law, statutes, and commandments. Okay? So that's what the Bible has to say about democracy. There is no, there is no democracy with God. Yes, God is a dictator. Okay? You either do or die. That's it. Plain and simple. We have no choice for us. It's time for us to come back and rule this planet Earth for us under righteousness. Because look, Horace, here's the thing about people. Is there unrighteousness with God? No. The law and adultery, is there something with that law? Is there something wrong with that law? That's a perfect law. Horace, are you married, Horace? Yeah, I am. Would you mind if your neighbor slept with your wife tonight? Uh, yeah, I would. Exactly. Why? Because that's adultery. That's mm. not something. That's not something God allows, and that's something that you would you would you would mind. Mm. You probably you, if you found out that happened, you'll probably kick his butt. You'll probably beat him up, or and then call the cops on him after. You'll probably you have people that do people go crazy. They lose their mind over stuff like that. Mm. Now. Eating pork, is that a bad law? No. That's not a bad law because we know that high blood pressure, diabetes, gout, all different illnesses and sicknesses come from eating unclean foods. That's why we suffer so much as a nation of people because we don't want to keep God's dietary laws. That's why we're sick. We're constantly sick and we don't know why. That's like uh, you, Horace, if you buy a, a car. You have a vehicle, right? You probably have a car. If you put the wrong oil in it, or the wrong gas in it, what's going to happen to the car horse? You're going to mess up the car. So us, in this physical body, God gave us this vehicle to nourish our spirit. So here we are putting the wrong oil, the wrong gas into this vehicle. And then when we get sick, sick or the vehicle breaks down in the future, meaning your body breaks down, and you got to end up going to the doctor, now you don't know why. Because you've been eating bush meat, you've been eating rat, You've been eating horse, you've been eating pork, shrimp, lobster, crab. You've been eating all the things that God told you not to do. God is the, is the creator of the universe. He knows his creations. Here he tells you, don't do this, you do it. What do you think is going to happen? Death and destruction and disease. The three Bs. I call it the three Bs. BPD. Death, destruction, disease. Or disease, death, destruction. Okay? So we have to come back to God's laws for us. There is no way around it. There is no way around it. Brothers and sisters of Malawi, I pray that you enjoy uh, today's message. I'm not sure if Horace has more questions for me. Um, no, for now, that's, uh, that's okay. That's okay. Unless okay, you have uh, please. anything. Yes, please. Brothers and sisters, visit us at www.israelunite.org. I'm still waiting for Horus to uh, access our website, print out flyers, and start handing them out. <laughs> and allow I do miss their sites. <laughs> was, 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 was still, but it's a, it's a good thing. I like the fact that you said you watched the video of Bishop Nathaniel in Nigeria, the video of the captain. So that shows me that you're watching. You're, 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 at least you're seeking. You're doing something. That's beautiful. So brothers and sisters, please join us. We would love, we would love most high will, we build a school in Malawi, a place of worship. We could come visit once the lockdown and all these things lift. We could come visit and teach the people, but we need your help. We need your help. And when I say we need your help, we're not talking about money. Uh, we're not like these other churches who want to rob you for your money. Um, we need your help as far as uh, participation and um, attendance. Okay? Visit our website. Print out the flyers, start handing it out. Okay, the more people that wake up, the better. And we will definitely come and uh, do the work. Okay, you can uh, also um, 
Visit us at IUIC in the Classroom on YouTube, IUIC in the Classroom on Facebook. Okay, so uh, Horace, what do you want to discuss next week? Lord willing, life lasts. Covering uh, next week, um, hmm. I'll see. Um, I'll see what comes up. Um, I'll see what comes up. I'll see what comes up. Uh, we'll okay. see. Uh, uh, we'll see as um, as uh, the week elapses. But uh, uh, most definitely, there will, uh, there will be something uh, worth discussing next week. We'll look at uh, maybe more interesting things and uh, issues in the Bible. Mm. Yes, yes, sir. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. All praises to the Most High. Uh, brothers and sisters of Malawi, thank you for having me here. Okay. Uh, so, thanks very much for coming. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling, these are our men repented at heart, the scriptures is proof, IUIC, we deliver the truth.